Okay, so now let's connect again and go to the Advanced Tuning tab. This can take a little while to load. There's a lot of information that it's pulling off of the flight controller. It's coming over the USB bus, but for some reason it takes a long time to gather it. So there's a lot of settings that you can adjust in here for how you want your aircraft to behave. Again, there's some shaded fields here. I'm not sure what profile they are associated with. I don't know that these would be relative to the battery profile or PID profile or mixer profile. But there's a whole section here just for the auto launch settings. As I mentioned earlier, you can enable auto launch. And if you do, these settings will show up. If you don't, you won't see these settings, I don't think. But you can read the help icons here for all of these different options. But basically, idle throttle, 1,000 microseconds means it's all the way down. I like to set mine up to, depending on my airplane, 1,300, 1,400 microseconds. That's almost mid-throttle. 1,500 would be mid-throttle. So I like to spin up the props so that when I do the launch, it doesn't kick in high throttle, giving a high torque that will roll my plane over and dump it into the earth like it's done to me in the past. So I like to spin it up a little bit. There's an idle throttle delay time. This I like to set to three seconds. So once you arm your aircraft, after three seconds, then the idle throttle will come up. This enables me to arm the aircraft, put my transmitter down or arrange it as needed, allows me some time to pick up my aircraft to get ready to throw it. So after three seconds, the motor comes on to almost mid throttle. And then once I throw it, it will spin up to this launch throttle setting. So maybe I want to set it to 1750, maybe 1700s enough. These are just values that you're going to have to play with to see what you like. I've just set it to what I've set it to, and I haven't really tweaked it much. Um, even with my throttle up at 1400 here with my GT, I had a problem with torque. This is my second Talon GT Rebel. The first one rolled over a couple of times, and I wound up throwing it in the trash. So you might want to even bump this up a little higher, depending on the, the characteristics of your aircraft. Max throw angle, I like to raise this up a little bit because it's not always straight. I like to leave some room for error. Auto launch does a pretty good job of straightening things out if you have a bad throw. Minimum launch time. What this does is when you arm your aircraft, it automatically goes into the auto launch mode. If you bump your sticks, if you move your sticks, you can turn the auto launch off. So you could wind up canceling your auto launch and you go th throw your plane and the throttle doesn't come up. So this allows you a little buffer time between arming your aircraft before it will respond to stick input. So you can minimize your opportunity for accidentally canceling auto launch. I usually don't set that, but you can. I don't know, maybe I'd set it for one second. Motor delay, motor spin-up time, I don't really know what that is. Delay between detected launch and launch sequence. So when you throw your aircraft, the flight controller is monitoring the accelerometer values, and it can detect that the airplane is moving. It can detect that it's been thrown. So between the time it detects that your airplane is being launched and your motor starts running up to the launch throttle, is determined that time is determined by this setting here. So 100 milliseconds, that's pretty pretty quick. So a lot of this is just to try to minimize danger of cutting your hands when you're throwing your airplane. A lot of times, maybe you don't want your throttle running when you throw your airplane. So it all depends on how you want to set these up. So there's a delay time there between it detects when the airplane has been thrown and the time it spins up. And then there's a motor spin-up time. 
So rather than kicking it in 1750 microseconds full throttle all at once, it can spin up. So maybe you want this to spin up at maybe a, take a quarter of a second to get up there. So you don't have such a high torque getting up to speed. Climb angle determines how fast it will climb. I like to set a launch timeout to seven seconds. Now, your auto launch feature will time out after this time period, meaning it will cancel the auto launch once this time expires. You will have different modes configured for your transmitter, so you can have a switch to tell it what mode to exit auto launch in. So when you arm your aircraft, you can then set your aircraft into a different mode so that when, when the launch times out, it'll exit into that mode. So I have a switch to activate loiter mode, which makes it just circle around its current location, or you can exit in angle mode or manual mode, whatever it is you desire. And that's all up to you at the time you decide to launch your airplane. But the launch will time out after this time period expires. Maximum altitude, this weird number here is a translation from 500 meters because we switched from metric to imperial. So I like to just set this to like 150 feet. An end transition time, I don't know what that is. Smooth transition time at the end of launch. This is added to the launch timeout. So I don't know what that transitions. I don't know. I don't really understand that one, so you can read more about that if you're interested. So I've set up auto launch settings. I'm happy with that, so let's look at what else is here. Battery estimation settings. I haven't even touched these, so I'm not even going to look at them. Return to home settings. Now we've enabled return to home on failsafe. You can also enable return to home on a switch, which I have on my transmitter. So I can just throw return to home if I want it to come back. I could put the transmitter down and wait for it to come back if I want to, and I have done that. So return to home settings, defines how your aircraft will behave when it's in the return to home mode. This setting here does not have a help icon available to it, but this return to home altitude mode says we want to be at least at the return to home altitude when we return to home. I'm not really sure. I'll have to look at and see how I set this up, but maybe I'll leave it at, at least. So let's make it at least 150 feet. My return to home altitude, I want that to be 150 feet. So when it returns, when it actually gets home, this is the altitude I want the airplane to settle in at when it loiters. It'll return to home and loiter around home coordinates. Now, when it activates return to home, it will climb or descend to this return to home altitude if this is turned on. I don't like to turn that on. I turn that off. But you could set maybe your return to home altitude to something higher. So let's say you wanted to come home at 350 feet. So if it's lower than 350 feet, if this is on, it'll climb to 350 feet. If you're above 350 feet, watch out for that 400 foot ceiling, then it will drop to 350 feet and then fly home. And then once it gets home, it'll come down, it'll descend, it'll loiter down to 150 feet. Or you can set this option. No, not this one. This is different. Climb first stage method. So I don't use these. I don't know what they are actually. So I'm not going to look at that. What I like to do is use linear descent. So whatever altitude I am when I'm flying out, this will fly a course that will descend from that altitude at that location to this altitude when it gets to home. So if I'm 400 feet out, 400 feet up, at distance, it'll fly back slowly descending to 150 feet until it gets to 150 feet at the home coordinates. That's what it's aiming to do. 
linear descent start distance. So if this is set to zero, this will this will begin your descent immediately upon re, uh, upon return to home. Whenever return to home is activated, it starts that linear descent. What you can do instead is defer that. So let's say you wanted to be a thousand feet out before it begins to descend. So you want to fly back at 350 feet, and then once you get within a thousand feet of home, now you start your descent down to 150 feet. I just set that to zero, but I can play with that if I want. Climb regardless of position sensors health. I don't like to touch these, so I'll leave that alone. But that basically will tell the flight controller to try to climb regardless of whether your position centers position sensors are telling you exactly where you actually are. Override return to home altitude and climb setting with roll pitch stick. So I could turn this on. I could let it fly its own descent rate or ascent rate or whatever it's doing, or it will let me control it with the stick. So I can control it while it's in return to home. I'm not really sure why I'd want to do that, but that option is there. So I turn that off. Return to home track back could have saved me in one, in, in, in one instance when I flew behind a mountain and lost signal. Fly backtrack, or fly return to home track back mode We'll turn the aircraft around and fly back the way it came if it enters return to home. And that's good to set up that for fail safe. Um, so you can set the distance, how far you want that to, to, to function. Uh, I have that off currently, but what you can do is you can set it to either on. So whenever you initiate return to home, it will back, it will track back, and then come back. It will go, you know, track back that far, and then it will come back, return to home from there on a straight shot. Or you can set this to FS for fail safe, so that if return to home is activated via fail safe, then this will kick in. So I like that idea. So I'm going to select select that. I do not have a safe home, so I turn this off. I'm not going to cover that right now. That can be an advanced feature later on. Safe home distance is related to that. Land after return to home, I do not ever want it to land. That's just my personal preference. I have not tried auto land, but maybe it'd be a good idea to have it land on fail safe once it gets home because maybe you don't have a way to reconnect, reestablish contact, so it would have to come down on its own. Maybe this is a, a safer approach. So I just have that turned off. Minimum return to home distance. <clears throat> In other words, return to home won't work until you're this at least this far away. That's pretty close. I'll set it to 20 feet. I don't like these weird numbers. Return to home abort threshold. What this sets up is if your plane is going further from home while you are in return to home, if it flies further than that, and I think I would set that further than this return to home track back distance, <coughs> just in case, but I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong. But you can set the threshold there to abort if your airplane's flying away. I don't know what it does once it aborts. So that's kind of confusing to me, but you can read more about that if that's of interest to you. Failsafe mission delay has something to do with mission, flying missions, which are automated flight patterns. And I haven't even looked in that yet, at that yet. So I'm going to ignore that. So now we come back over here to INAV fixed wing navigation settings. Again, these are associated with a profile. Which one? I don't know. Maybe it's the battery profile. Maybe these are all associated with the battery profile. Kind of doesn't seem like it would be a battery thing, but what do I know? The minimum throttle, 
maximum throttle and cruise throttle are used in the flight modes that are flying your airplane. So you can switch out of a manual flight mode or acro mode or whatever mode you like to fly in into a navigation mode like cruise mode and the flight controller will adjust your throttle as needed to maintain speed and altitude or whatever it means it's trying to do. So you can define these parameters here. I'm just going to set those. Um, I have a value in the OSD which tells me my throttle setting, but it's a percentage. And the throttle settings here are in microseconds. So how do I translate microseconds to percentage? We don't have that option in iNav. And again, if I was an iNav developer, I would want that feature in here somewhere. But you can play with these options as needed or as desired. Allow manual throttle increase. I don't have that set usually. Minimum throttle down pitch. Automatic pitch down angle when throttle is at zero in angle mode. So if you're in angle mode and you cut the throttle, you can set a pitch value here in degrees to orient your aircraft so it will glide on a smooth glide path. And that's probably something I need to play with because I've had some issues with gliding. Pitch to throttle ratio. Your throttle can affect the pitch of your aircraft, so this can compensate with that by adjusting your pitch by 10 microseconds or however many microseconds that you specify. So that's related to your pulse width for your throttle control. Each degree of climb will add this many units to the cruise throttle. So if you're climbing, it'll increase your throttle. If you're descending, it'll decrease your throttle. Throttle smoothing is some feature for transitioning between how smoothly the autopilot adjusts the throttle level in response to pitch angle. Instantaneous throttle adjustment threshold, max navigation bank angle. So in navigation mode, it won't bank more than this many degrees. Navigation climb angle, it won't ever climb more than this many degrees. Dive angle won't dive more than this many degrees. Loiter radius, I like to set to something like I don't know, 400 feet. Depending on your aircraft, if you have a large aircraft, you want a bigger loiter radius. Smaller ones can do a smaller radius. I like a nice wide radius. So that's 800 feet across. So that's quite a, quite a radius. I don't know. Maybe I can make that smaller, 300 feet. <clears throat> and you can determine whether it loiters to the right. Or to the left and I'm not sure I have any preference there it kind of depends on where I what my flight plans are maybe I'm coming in next to a road and I want to turn away from the road to enter the loiter you can set that as desired control smoothness Soaring mode, so you can, there's a soaring mode if you're setting up a sailplane. I haven't even looked at that. Haven't needed it. General navigation settings. Max altitude hold climb rate. Max navigation climb rate. Max altitude for navigation. Navigation motor stop override. I have not touched any of these. Waypoint navigation is something in the future I want to look at. I want to do this. I haven't looked at it yet. I don't know anything about it, so I'm going to skip that. Automatic landing settings, you can play with these here. I also haven't looked at that, so I'm going to skip that. So I'm going to say that I am done with this advanced tuning tab. I've had enough. So let's save and reboot so that we can go on to the next step. But first... As usual, we must always remember to disconnect.